and despicable. That is how former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman describes President Joe Biden's continued refusal to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The cold shoulder began after Netanyahu won Israel's November 2022 election for prime minister. This was his fifth re-election, and that is an Israeli record. So why is Biden giving the cold shoulder to our Democratic ally? Well, because President Biden does not agree with what he says is Netanyahu's desire to increase legislative powers. This includes giving the Israeli government control over the selection panel that selects judges and allowing ministers to appoint their own legal advisors. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Ambassador David Friedman, joins me. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Good to be back with you again. Thank you, sir. I, did I get it right that you're calling President Biden's refusal to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu despicable? Did I get that quote right? You got it right. You know, uh, the prime minister is the democratically elected leader of Israel. Israel is the most important ally of America in the Middle East, maybe in the entire world. Uh, they know each other a long time, as you uh, as you point out. He's really one of the uh, the best known leaders in the world today. He's been a great friend of America his whole life. And uh, President Biden, while he's invited, uh, you know, Naftali Bennett, who was the uh, prior prime minister to visit the White House. He refuses to invite Netanyahu. And it's not its not the discourtesy that bothers me so much. Uh, Netanyahu is a big boy. He can handle that. But it's the message which uh, Biden is sending to the world at this critical time when he's speaking with Iran and he's negotiating, you know, with Russia, China, at least that's what they're, they're, they're trying to do. To send this message that there's daylight between America and Israel is, is dangerous and very counterproductive. Well, you mentioned Iran, and, I, and, and the, you sort of moved over very quickly. But I see that as probably. I mean, it's not the it's not the social snub. I mean, you know, I don't I don't think that's a problem. I mean, I, I mean, it may be annoying, but to some. But, yeah, but uh, right now, the United States, it's reported, is having uh, negotiations with Iran for a mini agreement uh, after the 2015 agreement was uh, was uh, d was dissolved by President uh, Trump. Is that there's a discussion now about the enrichment of uranium? And the United States doesn't want Iran to go beyond 60 percent to the goal of 90 percent. And so there are all sorts of deals that are being suggested and worked out. That directly impacts the world, but more directly Israel and Netanyahu. Uh, Israel is the most directly impacted by that. They're the closest enemy of Iran, uh, you know, closest uh, in proximity. Uh, they're constantly being threatened by Iran. They're deeply interested in the outcome of these discussions. Uh, but Biden is signaling to Iran that Israel uh, is just not that important uh, by his refusal to, to meet with Bibi. And it's, it sends uh, a very dangerous signal that Iran can somehow, uh, uh, you know, negotiate in a way that doesn't take into account uh, Israel's concerns and uh, it, it doesn't foretell a, a good outcome. Uh, and and I, should, I should also say that, you know, the, the internal uh, Israel uh, politics about judicial reform you know, frankly, uh, they're, they're none of uh, our business. I mean, they will ultimately reach uh, some uh, compromise. You know, uh, Israel, uh, to its credit, uh, actually listened to the voices of hundreds of thousands of protesters and took this, uh, this agenda and, and, and moved it back to uh, the drawing board because they were concerned about the will of the people. Very few countries in the world are that democratic that they listen so carefully to the will of the people. But you know what? Look, you know, you have people in America that are pushing to uh, pack the Supreme Court, which is far more damaging to America and, and to far more likely to politicize the judiciary in America than anything Israel is doing. You don't see uh, Israelis or you don't see Netanyahu uh, criticizing that because it's none of Israel's business. And so, you know, this is really a uh, really an intrusion uh, into Israel's internal policies. And it's it's far too, you know, patronizing and paternalistic for America to get this deep into Israel's internal affairs. Is it? I mean, are, I assume Netanyahu would come here to the United States. Has he invited President uh, Biden to Israel? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's not going to uh, invite him unless he's given assurances that the invitation will be accepted. So I assume uh, I think he'd love to have uh, the president of the United States visit Israel. Um, but no, he, he hasn't been invited to uh, to America. He would come 
uh, I think in a flash. I think he dropped everything he's doing because he values this relationship so much, and he's been such a good friend of America over the years. So um, uh, this is one of those um, meetings that people sort of take as a matter of course. People just assume that the prime minister of Israel will come to America from time to time. I think when I was, you know, in government, those four years, I think Bibi was in the White House at least uh, a couple of times a year, you know, and, um, and, and those, those, those meetings were very important, not just as to the substance, but as to the message that we sent to the world about our relationship with the state of Israel. Ambassador David Friedman, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta. Appreciate it.